went to a, a Catholic secondary school in, in North Dublin, where I lived in Rohini. Um, it was quite a formal school, it was quite strict, you know, all girls. Um, and we, you know, very strict on uniform, very, you know, all about academic achievement and punctuality. In my six years at that school, I was never really that late. I, was ne I never missed days. I got a award in transition year for best attendance and punctuality of the year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have a plaque. I have a plaque, yes, yes, yes. Don't think of me as a hero. Yeah. yeah. So, and I was always in. I was always in, I was always on time, and I was always there. Didn't do much while I was there, but I was always there. Um, so, for my leaving cert exams, I got the timetables printed out. Had two timetables. They gave it to them, gave us to them, gave them to us on two sheets. They were like tablets, and you're like, there you go. And it's like, all right. My entire life will depend on my attendance at these hours. So I took a highlighter and highlighted all the exams that I was going to be in. So this is, I think I was sitting, I sat seven exams. So I, I highlighted all seven of my exams. And I was like, right, English paper one. And I started off, started off on a high. English paper one, maths, English paper two, Irish. So I did my Irish paper one and it went pretty good. It was good. And then I was, you know, I was a little bit burned out. It was the end of the first week and I was kind of stressed. And my mum came in to me. So I checked my timetable. I was like, right, okay, Irish paper two is my next exam. And there was home economics that day as well. My mum came in to me and said, so, Neve, are you all ready for your exam tomorrow? And I was like, yes, mum, totally ready. I've looked it all up. And I woke up the next morning about nine o'clock. because at that point, I'd sort of been programmed to wake up at nine in the morning. And I woke up and I went, I didn't, did I? It was 20 past nine at this stage. The, the morning exams started at half nine in the morning and I went, no, 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 no. It was home economics at half nine in the morning, which I don't do, you know, because that was fine. And then it was going to be Irish in the afternoon and I, that was going to be fine. I was like, but was it? No, it was. It absolutely was. No, roll back over and go back to sleep. And I was like, I'll just go down and check. So I got up out of the bed. My timetable had been put up on the notice board in our kitchen. So I, you know, nipped down the stairs and the house phone started ringing. Now, I don't know about you, but when the house phone starts ringing at half nine in the morning on a weekday, you know something's up. And I was like, no, 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 it can't be that, it can't be that. And I walked very straight back into our kitchen. And just to set the scene, I am in a Winnie the Pooh nighty. My hair is all mussed up on one side because I've just come out of the, I've just gotten out of bed and I'm standing there staring at the, at the notice board and I'm going, I didn't. And then the phone rings out. My mum didn't get to it in time. So her mobile starts ringing and I'm going, oh no, oh no. Because there, and I'd highlighted it, I'd highlighted it and put a little star next to it because it was one of my, it was one of my compulsory subjects. So a little star was next to it as well. That was the little system I had organised. It was there, Irish, paper two, 9.30. Oh God, no. And then I hear my mum upstairs and there's just a pause for a moment. And I'm running up the stairs because at this point I know. I know, I did it, I did it. So I'm running up the stairs and then my mum comes out of her room. Neve, And I go... So I run, into my, I run into my bedroom and I'm trying to find my uniform. My mum is like maybe two steps behind me. She's like, how could you do this? And I'm like, I know, I know. I'm trying to deal with it as I go, mom. oh my God. So I was looking around my room like, oh, oh God, okay, skirt, right. And it was one of those skirts with the old fashioned clasp. So I was going, get it on. And then I was going, jumper, right, jumper. Jumper went on inside out and backwards. The V-neck was here. So I'm standing there on the landing in a backwards jumper, my, t my shirt buttoned up the wrong way, and you know, a white sock and a navy sock, and I'm standing there. And my mum just comes out to me, and she's just like, <sighs> and she starts doing that mum thing that mums do when they're angry, that they start sort of, they're really quiet, but at the same time, they do everything really loud. So she's slamming doors, and she's going, Ass! and every couple of seconds, she's going, a state exam, Neve, a state exam. And I go, I know, I know, just get me to the school, please. The first thing that greets me is a teacher named Mr. Brennan, who I never liked that much. And even though I have, I have this singular goal, which is get to the exam, sit down, do your exam, and don't fail, in my head I'm still a 17-year-old girl, so I go in and I go, I'm here. Oh, Mr. Brennan, hi. I don't like you. And he's being all nice, and he's like, oh, Neve, are you okay? And I run in, and I'm just like, oh! Sitting 
there hyperventilating and, and dying. <laughs> and I think, I'm, I think I'm also beginning to choke a little bit. So he walks me down, and I'm, I'm walking wounded now. I'm just like, oh, I'm such an idiot. I'm never going to do this again. And he, walks me, and he walks me down through the staff room and the staff corridors, which you don't get to see an awful lot when you're a student, unless you're a prefect, and I wasn't a, pre I wasn't a prefect, <laughs> as you might have guessed. So he's walking me down through the halls, and I'm like, but I'm also, again, because I'm a 17-year-old girl, I'm like, ooh, this is where the teachers have coffee. Okay, no, no. <laughs> and he brought me out, and we did all of our exams in this massive sports hall. It was huge. It was this huge sports hall that they built when I was in second year at that school. So I used to do geography in the geography room, and there would be, like, builders on girders outside. So I didn't learn an awful lot of geography when I was 14, because you're just sitting there like... You fancied the lads that much, it was just something to look at. You were like, and then sometimes they take their shirts off, and we'd all go, Woo! So there's this massive, big, huge sports hall, and, and so everybody in my year was there because everybody was sitting in the Irish paper. Everyone was there everyone who liked me, everyone who hated me, everyone who thought I was an idiot. And I was like, Oh god, they're all gonna see me, they're all gonna see me. And there were some junior sort of people there as well, so people who looked up to me and respected me and thought I was cool. And I was like, Oh god. Such a failure. And he was like, Neve, are you ready to go in? And I was like, yes, I'm ready to go in now. Please let me go to my exam. And so in my head, I thought, well, you know what, Neve, you're a massive failure, but you could just walk in here, make an entrance, and strut in. You could sort of be like, boom, yeah, where's the exam? Yeah, I'm late, I killed a man, one moment. You could strut to your desk and you'd kick your feet up and it would have been like, oh yeah, I'm such a badass, I don't even need to come on time, what? Now, I didn't quite manage that. <laughs> because I was in a skirt and I couldn't kick the door. And so instead, I thought the best thing to do would sort of be to go, all the way to my desk. And I was down, way down one end of the hall. Like, it, it's such a, it was such a big hall that fog formed. I was like, oh man, this is the worst thing ever. If only that was the worst thing ever. But my two best friends, my friends Lisa and Tara, were sitting, like one was, in, was, one was behind me and one was in front. Again, I know that sounds like something I would make up for narrative convenience. No, it was actually like that. They were both sitting there like, where's Eve, what happened? Did someone die? What? And they were both like doing their exam and also like, where's Eve? And so I walk in and just sit down and I'm like, play it cool. Maybe no one noticed. <laughs> and the superintendent, who was very, very nice, I have to say, the, the, or whatever you call the person who hands out the exams, the examination lady was actually really cool. And she came down to me, handed me my paper and went, now, would you like an extra 10 minutes at the end of the exam? And I went, Okay, just let me do my exam. Where's my pen? So I was like, oh no, I have a pen, that's okay. Had a pen, have a pen, you go, oh, have a pen. So I sat there doing my exam and I was like, oh my God. So in my head, I'm standing there and my, my inner conscience is just sort of there like, what did we just do? Uh, all the other bits of my mind are just like, I, I don't know. I don't know what timekeeping was doing. I don't know what memory had going, but we, we, we failed, you guys. We screwed up. So I was like, what am I going to do? Because like everyone in my year just saw me walk in, making a fool of myself. And they all heard me walking because I was breathing like. <gasps> so I was like, and my hands were shaking. And I was like, OK, so I'm going to have to try and, and do something. I'm going to have to try and regain a little bit of my cool, because I wasn't that cool when I was at school, you know? And I was like, this was one of the last times they were going to see me. And I was like, well, I'm going to have to try and regain, scrape back some sort of dignity or elegance. So I was like, what do you do when you've come into an exam late? And again, this is like a nightmare thing that happens. People have nightmares about this in their 30s when they're late for an exam. And, you know, and if they don't get the exam, then they're going to just, you know, they're just going to blow you up. So I was like, well, well, I could leave early, I suppose. <laughs> That's a pretty good idea. Nicely done, Brain, you've saved yourself. So I sealed up the, because you, you, know, you pull, pull the tape back, I sealed up the paper, and I just went Whoo! And everybody around, I imagine, in my mind, everybody was like, oh, 
oh my god, she's leaving early. Oh my god, what a badass. And I'm like, yeah. Well, I was actually more like, yeah. <laughs> so the superintendent came down. Lovely woman. She's like, are you sure? And I'm like, oh yeah. I'm sure. Well, actually, it was more like, oh yeah, I'm sure. And she was like, okay. So she took the paper and walked off. And then I was like, I stood up and I cast my eye over to my friend. And she was like, and I'm like, no, no, it's, it's cool. I got this. I got this. I just walked out of the exam hall, <laughs> kicked the door open. Someone shouted at me for kicking the door open. I was like, sorry. And I walked out and I was like, boom, yeah, save that one. So there are a few morals to that story. Firstly, check your timetable the night before. And that might seem like a simple thing, but do it because, ah. Um, other thing is every bad situation that you find yourself in, no matter how disastrous or silly or stupid or foolish you look, it can be salvaged both by walking out like a badass, as I did, but also by actually ending up passing the exam. I got a C3. Boom. And not that I recommend this to anyone, anyone watching, you know, because you might not pass. But anyway, the other massive bonus is that I have, since then, I have never had a dream where I am late for an exam <laughs> and I can't get there. And anyone who ever tells me about having this terrible dream, I just go, I lived it. And I survived. Thank you very much.